Hi, thanks for watching our video about curved squeeze edge rounding of polyhedral surfaces. My name is Clara Mundilova, and this is joint work with Rupert Malacek from the University of Innsbruck and Tomohiro Tashi from the University of Tokyo. This, we started working on this problem uh, during the structural origami gathering. This is a workshop where we collaboratively work on open problems and we meet annually. And we would like to thank all the participants for the helpful discussions and comments. So here we um, give one answer to the following question, namely how to turn a polyhedral surface into a curved squeeze design with rounded edges and closed vertices. So here, this is the chicken wire tessellation, and we turned this into a rounded shape where we filled at the edges and uh, folded the resulting cylinders into conical elements around the apices, around the vertices. Um, so this design is inspired by origami shapes by of Janine Mosley, the orb, or um, by spherical polyhedra with regular faces uh, that were published in the British Conference Proceedings. And we implemented our method um, as a grasshopper component for Rhino 6. And we also offer a library to incorporate more complicated designs and to, to give the designer more freedom um, in choosing edge widths and depths of APCs. Okay, so our algorithm works as follows. We start with the develop of, uh, with the polyhedral surface with planar faces. And in the first step, we round each edge of the polyhedral surface with right circular cylinders that our attention continues to the adjacent faces. And to get rid of the mess that uh, comes up on uh, around vertices, we then consider each vertex separately and we find a good apex position, uh, which I will specify later what this means. And we fold into cones and planes around with this specified apex position around each of the vertices. And there is a little bit of design freedom, so the user can still specify like the extent to which the vertex goes inside this polyhedron. And this results in a, a framework with many choices for design. Okay, so there are two non-trivial steps in this approach. Namely, the first one is, what is a good apex? And the second open question is that if I have a good apex, how do I find the crease curve that would fold into this apex? Um, and I would like to start with the second question. So for this one, uh, we we applied method describes in, described in this paper about on mathematical paper folding. And this, these methods um, are the following. So we consider a cylinder and its development. So this is the 3D cylinder, and this would be the, its development. And we have a 3D apex position and a 2D apex position. And then for each ruling in 3D and the corresponding ruling in 2D, we find a point F that satisfies um, certain distance constraints. Namely, those distance constraints are that at the distance between F and V in 3D is the same as the distance to the, between the two corresponding developed points. And also um, the distance between a fixed point on the ruling to F is the same distance as between the developed point and F, small f. And we do this for all rulings, and this gives us a crease curve that would fold, or the unique crease curve that would fold a given cylinder into the cone with a specified 3D and 2D apex. And the good news is that if we attach another surface, for example, a tangent continuous surface, tangent plane <laughs> to um, the cylinder, the crease curve will also be tangent continuous. So a straight plane folds along a straight line, and the straight line is um, just the tangent at the end point of this crease curve. Okay, but unfortunately, that's not all. 
So if we consider um, the crees um, that we computed, there are actually four involved surfaces, two coming from the cylinder and two coming from the cone. And there are there are two choices that we can make to to get developable surfaces. Namely, uh, we can in this configuration we could choose the lower cylinder and the uh, part of the cone which contains the apex to get a developable configuration, and or uh, the part that doesn't contain the apex and the upper part of the cylinder. So this would result in this configuration. But what we shouldn't do to have a developable configuration is to choose, for example, this part of the cone and the lower part of the cylinder. For our approach, um, we want to always be able to choose the lower part of the cylinder and the upper part of the cone. But um, whether we can do that or not depends very much on the location of the 3D apex. And this brings us to the next question, namely, what is a good apex and how do we find a 3D apex so that we can actually choose this pair of surfaces? Okay, so, and there are a few things more that could go wrong. So um, we want to choose, um, to always use the surface pair where the cylinder is part of the edge cylinder, so um, it uh, so it contains the the central the base curve of the cylinder in the center of the edge, and the crease curve, and also is the conical element that connects the crease curve to the three D apex. And so this might not be developable, and we will optimize for the three D location to make this developable. Um, then we, what we don't want is to for the crease curves to like, go too far. <laughs> so in particular, if you look at an edge and the two uh, vertices or apices corresponding to the two adjacent vertices, we don't want the crease curves to intersect with each other. And um, so we want the crease to stay in a valid range. And this is also something that we can fix by choosing the 3D apex to lie in a valid position. Another thing that uh, is often desired is to have uh, tangent continuous crease curves. So, um, and this we will also express as a constraint. And what we also don't want is to have self intersections. Those would be unfortunate for fabrication. Okay. So, uh, first, uh, developability and valid range. So, um, to, to, so suppose we have a, um, a cylindrical patch. So this one is the 2D cylindrical patch, and this is the 3D cylindrical patch. And we have a vertex V fixed in 2D. And now we want, we want to make sure to find a good 3D apex position so that we can always choose the right cylinder and the right cone namely the cone that has the cone apex in it. Okay, so first the valid patch combination, the developability combination uh, condition is, so intuitively we want the surface to, to make a bend. We, for every pair of distances on the surface, we want the 2D distances to be longer than the 3D distances to insert a, a kink. And this can be expressed by requiring that the height of the 3D vertex is lower than the height of the 2D vertex. And so this image should illustrate what happens if it's not the case. So if the height of uh, the 3D vertex is now higher than the 2D vertex, then in this configuration, we wouldn't be able to choose the lower cylinder and the uh, conical element that contains the apex, but we would need to choose the other pair, namely either uh, this one and like the outer surface or the upper cylinder and the inner cone. So this is unfortunate. So we want to ensure that the 3D height is lower than the 2D height. And valid range can be expressed by requiring that uh, for each ruling, the, the 3D point is close enough to not make the, the crease disappear or like, um, uh, 
go beyond the boundary that we have. So in particular, when we look at the blue circle that uh, is centered at C0 and goes through V, and the red circle that goes through T, which is like an upper bound of our crease curve and goes through V, then we want the 3D apex to be inside the blue, uh, the blue sphere, um, which is of the same radius as the uh, 2D sphere here, and uh, without or minus the red sphere, which is again of the same radius as this one, and passes through the corresponding point in 3D. So all those constraints can be expressed in terms of um, linear and quadratic constraints, and this is what we will, what we are then optimizing for. Okay, tangent con continuity. So as mentioned earlier, we have that um, the decreases will be tangent continuous as long as the surfaces are tangent continuous. But if our surfaces are um, not adding, like don't have, are not flat or the vertices are not flat, then we need to insert a cut somewhere. And if we insert this cut, we cannot ensure tangent developability anymore. And so the way how to avoid kinks is by specifying the 2D apex to be the center of rotation that would rotate one possibility of laying out uh, one surface close to the gap or the other possibility of laying out um, the surface close to the gap. And this is, uh, so if we choose the, 3D apex, uh, the 2D apex to be the center of rotation, then um, we're good. <laughs> and lastly, um, to avoid self-intersections, we want to make sure that all the adjacent surfaces along a vertex are visible from the 3D apex. So we do get self-intersections if we like are not able to see a vertex anymore. And this can be, again, expressed in terms of linear constraints. And ultimately, what you get is that we can express all those constraints in terms of linear and quadratic constraints, and we find valid and feasible apex positions in this space of valid constraints. However, unfortunately, we cannot find a good apex positions for um, saddle points. So unfortunately, those are excluded. And this is why the bunny has a, a couple of holes in, in it. OK, and finally, uh, what, we all, what we also covered in our paper is that if we start from a origami um, or from an origami pattern or distillation that are that can be unfolded into the plane without any cuts, then what we would like to have is if we round this shape, that the resulting shape will again be developable into the plane without any cuts. Um, and for that, so if we do this rounding procedure, we we'll use material. And so um, if we do this not carefully enough, we might use different amounts of material and potentially we will not end up in a closed shape. And so um, thinking of it differently, so when we do this uh, rounding, we lose material perpendicular to, to the edge. And so if we walk around the vertex, we want to make sure that by losing this material perpendicularly to the edge, we end up at the same position we started from. And um, this amounts to uh, looking for a positive length reciprocal diagram of the 2D pattern. And these are also called spider webs. Um, yeah, and here are here's another example of what we managed to, um, to round successfully to make it developable. Um, yeah, that's all. Thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, please reach out.